Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reedy with Future Pastimes. I'm a designer on Dune themed games and expansions. And I recently did some uh, videos that talked about some of the new treachery cards that were in the first expansion for the Gale Force 9 edition of Dune, and that is the Ixians and Tlilaxu expansion. And uh, some of those cards had originally been part of the Spice Harvest expansion for the Avalon Hill version of Dune. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about what treachery cards came in the other expansion, which is the Duel expansion that was published for the Avalon Hill edition of Dune. So it did come with five uh, additional treachery cards, and this is what the treachery cards looked like then. And here's a comparison in the, the size of the cards. So they were much smaller, uh, much thinner cardstock. Um, and also, no text explanation, just uh, the name of the card. So it did come with another poison defense, another snooper in there. That was one of the five cards. Uh, and that was because it did add another poison card. So it added a lack of drug um, to it. Um, and then there were three other cards, one of which was a, um, a worthless card. So Kul Wahad doesn't do anything. Uh, we do have Kul Wahad was another card that was in the uh, Ixians and Tleilaxu expansion. So that was a blast from the past. And then two other cards, which have, um, one hasn't been added, and we'll talk about what it does and why that is. And another, which has been added, but was changed. So let's start with that one. And that is Residual Poison. So this was the original Residual Poison. And again, the explanation of what it does isn't on the card, and it wouldn't fit on the card. So let's uh, let's consult uh, the rules for the duel, because that is where they explain the new treachery card. So Residual Poison is played face down in front of a player's character shield. That player must pay you a bribe of one to four spice, you name the amount. Uh, on every turn, it remains there. If the player fails to pay, then you reveal the resi residual poison card, and that player loses any one leader of your choice except a main leader. Main leaders were the 10 strength leaders that are on the shields, which are not part of the Gale Force 9 version of Doom. Um, you may also bluff playing residual poison by playing a worthless card. So everybody, you know, <laughs> you don't have to have the residual poison card. You just have a worthless card, you put it down in front of them, and you say, this is residual poison, and you have to give me four spice every turn. Um, if you are found to be bluffing about residual poison before you can remove the card, then you must pay the offended player three times the amount of the bribe you are demanding. And if you do not have enough spice, you owe that amount and must pay it when you get it. You may retract the residual poison or bluff card during any of your moves, uh, whereupon it is discarded, unseen in all cases. So that's what it did. Um, so on the surface, you know, what an interesting and unique game effect. Um, certainly thematic in many ways, um, but not the most practical game effect, not for Dune. <laughs> it's a really kind of cumbersome and uh, strange effect. Um, so it's one of those things where you don't even have to have the card. You can do the thing, which strikes me as weird. Uh, and and as, a, as a designer, I'm not a fan of stuff like that necessarily. Um, so, yeah, you say, great, I'm putting this card in front of you and I'm saying it's residual poison and uh, you have to give me four spice. You know, I mean, you could demand less, but um, and maybe you would demand less if, if you were bluffing with a Kul Wahad or something else. Um, and so you say, yeah, all right, it's residual poison. You got to give me the spice every turn. Um, it's not really sh clarified though. When, when do you give them? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't really say. So, um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird card. The worst part I think is the, is, is the bluff. And, and this whole idea that, uh, you're paying four times the amount and then, if you don't have it, you just owe it and you, whenever you get spice. So that means that you're getting your chome charity if you have no spice and you're giving that away the second you get it. 
And so if you were demanding four spice and now you have to pay 16 and uh, yeah, it's just kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, that's the risk and you pay the penalty for doing it. But um, yeah, then someone says, I'm going to play a truth trance. Is that a, is that a worthless card uh, that's there? And like, oh, whoops. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I didn't, I, I just wasn't really a fan of, uh, of that, it just seemed like it was really hard to to manage. It was not elegant at all. So we opted to change it. And so the residual poison does show up in the second expansion, that's the Choman Richess expansion, as one of the cards that the Richess player uh, sells. Um, you play on an opponent before choosing leaders in a battle. That faction will lose one of their available leaders at random to the tanks. No spices collected for it. So certainly far less uh, dramatic. Um, and um, I understand if there's some people who are like, oh, you know, it just seems like it was, uh, you know, a missed opportunity. I don't really agree. I just think trying to find a way to make that card work in the Gale Force 9 edition of Dune was just not worth the effort. Um, this residual poison is very straightforward. Um, it is impactful. When somebody knows that you have it, they know that they get into a fight with you, um, you're very likely to lose one of your leaders at random, which is not um, a particularly enjoyable experience. So you've got that threat. And part of the thing that the Rich S faction does is that that card is sold publicly. So you know that you're buying it and you know who has it. And I think that makes for some scary interactions. All right, let's get to the other card, and that is Cone of Silence. So I always enjoyed the art on that. I thought it was kind of fun. Let's look at what Cone of Silence does. So prevents any player within its scope from buying cards, threatening Canley, which is a dual thing, or making an alliance. It may be played at any time upon any named player, players, and stays in effect until the end of the turn. You may direct it against as many of your opponents, not allies, as you desire. This is another one that just it had a lingering, ongoing effect that you had to manage and keep track of. Um, it was kind of a, I don't know, it was, it's, it's really negative and it bogs down, makes, makes gameplay less fun, I think. So it, um, it was not a high priority, and I think for any of us. So the original designers um, were not, you know, banging the drum to let, let's get Cone of Silence in there because there's so many Dune fans out there clamoring to see it added to the game. I'm sure that there are some that want it in there. I know that some players have done a homebrew version of Cone of Silence for their Gale Force 9 edition, um, but uh, I, was n I was never a fan of this card, even when I got it in the Avalon Hill edition. Um, I, we sometimes would include it in the Treachery deck. Sometimes just both of these cards, Residual Poison and Cone of Silence, um, were just left aside. We're like, mm, don't really think we need to include those. Um, they were not that fun. So that was really what it came down to. So um, let me know your thoughts on these cards. Do you think that they should have been added into the... Gale Force 9 edition of Dune, um, as is. Should they have been added with some changes? And what changes would you have suggested? Um, you know, there, there's always a, a possibility of another expansion, although, um, again, I'm not particularly interested in either of these cards. So you'd have to really convince me uh, that they should be reconsidered. But let's make your case, uh, or let me know if you agree. Like, good riddance. Uh, happy to not... Have those in our Dune. There's enough crazy stuff going on already. And all of it is fairly uh, easy to implement and doesn't require you having to remember or track things or use markers to say, like, who's been affected by this? And, um, you know, I played it in the Nexus phase and now I'm trying to remember um, four phases later if, it, if it's affecting everybody. Yeah, I played it on everybody. It just seems goofy to me, so... Um, there you have it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.